Not a bad group. I think it's pretty neat. You know the best part, and I didn't say this earlier, you know the best part of the children's lesson? When I get to do them. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best time. You know what? I got to ask you a question. Do you know all your neighbors on your block? Do you know everyone by name and by face? All of those people who live up and down both sides of the street? Do you guys know them? Do you know your next door neighbor by name? You, re you know your next door neighbor? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of like that too because my next door neighbor keeps changing lately. <laughs> but I don't know him. You know, and that happened in the Bible. A guy, a guy who was a, of law, I guess like a lawyer, and he came to Jesus and asked the question. He said, who's my neighbor? <laughs> he sounds just like us. Who's my neighbor? I don't know. So Jesus answered it this way. He told the story of what we know as a good Samaritan. He said it was a man who was beaten up, and he was laying over here on the right side of the road. They had robbed him and beat him up, and he was hurting bad, bleeding maybe. I, I watch um, this at Trinity Lutheran School. You watch it there at, at, at the movie on screen? Uh -huh. She says she watched it at Trinity Lutheran School. But the good Samaritan. And so anyhow, he's all beat, this guy is beaten up. He's hurting. And here comes a pastor, or they say in the Bible, a priest. And he walks by. Instead of going, you think he will go over and be the first one to help, right? He didn't do it. He went to the other side. He walks to the other side far away. He wants nothing to do with him. And a little while later, another guy comes by, and he's someone who works in the church. He, too, you would think would be the one to come and help him. What does he do? Poops, the other side. Don't want nothing to do and wash my hands like it doesn't, didn't even happen. But here comes a stranger. And the, the man who was hurt was Jewish. The people who walked by were Jewish. But here comes a man who's not Jewish. He's from a different place. He's not one of them. But he sees this man laying there, hurting and bleeding. He stops. He helps him. He cleans him up. He puts him on his donkey. He takes him to this place down the road, an inn, they call it, like a hotel, I would say, and takes him there. He sees it. He gets cleaned up. He sees that the innkeeper will keep him there until he is capable of getting up and going around. Right now, I have a brother in the hospital. Just mentioned because it's kind of the same thing. They wouldn't let him go home yesterday. Instead, they put him on the fourth floor from the second floor until he can stand on his own two feet and get strong again. He said it might be two or three weeks. That's what happened to this man. He put him there and said until he is capable of getting up and being able to be strong and can do it. So God was saying to this man who asked, who is my neighbor? He's saying that everyone is my neighbor. That means not only the people who live on my block, but the people I might be in my car and someone got a flat tire. Should I stop and offer him help? Oh, we say, what do we say? Oh, he's got a cell phone. He can call for help. We don't know that. So maybe it doesn't hurt to stop and say, can I help you? Or if you see someone on the side of the street or hurting, we got cell phones, a lot of us, right, in our pockets. We can at least call 911. But a lot of us would do what? We would just go on the other side of the street and say, let someone else take care of it. God says no. So everyone in the whole world, even though we don't see them, they are our neighbors. And God says we should be kind to them, help them when they need help, pay attention. And I would think on our own block, we should know them. And I think starting tomorrow, I'm going to go knock on some doors and mm -hmm. say, I've been your neighbor for over 38 years. I don't know how long you lived here, but I want to get to know you. And then if someone needs help, guess what we can do our neighbors on our block? We can help them. Can we pray? Hold our hands, bow our heads. Dear God, help us to understand that everyone in this world, no matter where, no matter how we come across them anywhere, they are our neighbors. And if someone needs help, we should stop and help them. Don't walk on the other side of the street, but pay attention and then give help. Give help just like Jesus Christ gave us help. He died on a cross that so we might be saved. Let us be like Jesus and give others help. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, you guys, before you go, I want to do something special with all of you right here. You know it's the practice, and some of you already have these, to give Bibles. Now we're going to give them to our first and our second graders. So how many of you are in first and second grade here? What do you got here? 
Okay, okay. That looks really good. I've got three Bibles here and for you guys. Is. And this is a really, really important thing. Um, it's most important to put the Bible into our hands because the Bible is what tells us about God. We, we learn about Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Yeah, some of you guys are going to get them later on when you get into first and second grade. We want you to know this is a special gift from your church to you. Moms and dads, this is a special gift for you now to take home or for them to take home and for you to start reading through them. These are wonderful Bibles with great pictures in them and explanations and helps to help them to get into that word so that they can read it. Then when they get to be confirmation age, they're going to buy another Bible, and that's going to be a little more on an adult level. My prayer is that that Bible will be something that they will keep with them for the rest of their life. They'll mark it up. They'll be able to go back and forth to it, be able to read what God's Word says. Because tell you what, I read the Bible many times. So every time I read it, I find something new there, because that's the way God's Word is. So I want you to pray with me that these Bibles would really be great for our three who are going to get them today, but that all of us would be more active in reading that Word. So let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, you said that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We ask you bless these three who are receiving these Bibles this morning as a gift from their church because we love them. We want them to be in the word. Bless their families that it might be a time for them to be able to be in that word on a regular basis and learn more and more about what you have planned for us and have done for us. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me look through here and let me see. Here's a Bible that has the name... It says right here, it says Ella Lang. So Ella, here is your Bible from St. Paul. So may God bless that Bible and your reading of that Bible uh, along with your family. Here's another one that says Austin Burnett. So Austin, here is your Bible. Ella, you can hand it. Austin, may God bless that Bible and your reading of that Bible. That is your Bible, my man. And this says Mia, Mia Hill. So Mia, <laughs> this is your Bible too. So may God bless those Bibles and your reading of that Bible. You know that if you ever have a question about what you read in that Bible, you can always ask me. You can always ask your Sunday school teachers. I pray that you'll bring, bring them to class with you. So as you read your Bible stories and hear more about it, you can look it up in that Bible and it will be a blessing to you. Pretty cool Bible. Okay. So may God bless these Bibles and the reading of these Bibles in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. You can all go back to your rows now. I, I can go too. If you, get you can too. Me. Yep. You can too. 